Hey everybody, welcome back to Ready Steady Play. Ah uh, yeah, good to see you. So this is just going to be a rundown of that game uh, we just played, of The Edge Dogfall, the yes. three-player game. Demons win! Only one with the demons. Uh, humans. I'm wearing my lucky shirt, that's why. Stupid humans didn't get it. <laughs> wearing my lucky shirt. Where have I heard that before? <laughs> Michael, I think... All media ever. Uh, we yeah, can exactly. uh, safely say... There's an errant bug on mm, the table. That's... It's gone. It's gone. We can safely say that that was a complete disaster. <laughs> Woo! Chaos! A disaster. A disaster. <laughs> Not only did we fail to kill each other, we failed to kill Ali too. Hey, I, I'm quite uh, happy with how it turned out. Well... Understandably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Poor Maybe Barky. it's my inherent... Why can't we all be friends? Poor thing Barky. coming out again. You say that. You did you alright murdering in the practice game. You I won did that great. one. Yeah. yeah, you murdered my dog. I did murder your dog. It's a horrible, ugly dog. I was really tempted to quit. <laughs> it's not actually a dog, it's a demon. Let's be clear about that. Right I don't now. endorse killing dogs. I, 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 I'm sorry, Gore Hound? Hound is a dog. Hund? He's not of the canine faction, though, is he? Hund? Uh, he's uh, of the demon faction. He's, I mean, the demon. he's, he's of the mean kind. He, he might have started as a dog, but I'm pretty sure something happened along the I way. I like dogs, by On the way, way down <laughs> to the bottom. Yes. Barky. Um, so yes, that was... I think we, you and I made some tactical errors. And I took full <laughs> advantage of them. Yeah, I mean, I, you, all you had to kind of do was sit there and watch the car crash. Which and kind of a, happened in a, our a, practice game. Occasionally throw a fireball. Um, I don't know, I was, a lot, I was a lot more aggressive in this one. I went straight for combat, turn one. Mm. I mean, I, didn't, I wasn't exactly passive in what you guys were doing. No. Mm. I was very, very aggressive. But what was interesting was that you played aggressively, and then Michael's reaction was to come and attack me. But that's because you felt you needed the crystals, right? Correct. I mm. felt... Because because of the way... If I'd gone down here, I probably wouldn't have... I probably would have attacked Ollie. Um, <coughs> I was actually expecting... because, But because I was up here, um, I felt... Uh, I had to move something, so I don't know. I, I felt like I left that there, but then had to attack this. But then that was maybe a bit dumb, because it was still had to be, several to be honest, factions on there. So To be honest, I think one of the big things was you putting that there, because that effectively meant, from the get-go, I went, well, I've, I'm not contesting them. I can't do it. There's no way I can get it. If that was there, I'd probably have been more persuaded to move yeah. further forward. But and the I, other thing about putting that there is what it did was allowed you to shut off a crystal for me but what it did also was prevent you from getting a crystal correct, for yourself correct mm. and i feel like if i if i'd gone there at the start then the game would have been so much different because i felt like i wouldn't have needed to have gone up there mm. to stop you from getting crystals because here mm. i just yeah. stopped you anyway yeah so what that did was it shut me down but it didn't help you in any way correct you know um, but I'm, if i'd I'm, gone down here and not gone up there i, th- I think this is what was going through my I mind i think also if she'd gone into flight mode she could have landed here, pushed that person out, right? Yeah. And then you would have controlled that crystal, and I can't move her. I can't push her. So then I would have been forced to react to that in some way, perhaps coming down here mm. or doing something else entirely. Yeah. What was her flight mode like? Because you didn't, um, didn't actually do it, did you? She's she's got very she basically she moves a lot and she's got very aggressive, but she's got no defense. Yeah. So she becomes very powerful aggressively, but. Then Backstab. your banner allows you to just put endurance back on her. Correct. One of Michael's banner abilities is just putting endurance on the angel of death, mm-hmm. so she can just yeah. get a hit point back if and she no, does take damage. And all those tactics were going through okay. my mind, but I think I was one or two steps behind where the gameplay was, and so I was running out of time by trying to deploy that strategy too late. Well, the three-player game certainly seems the end certainly seems to be largely dictated by who's going to run out of action cards. Um, yeah, I, but although we did find in the uh, the practice game, which did end with us running out of cards again, yeah. and specifically you, because you've built a deck that burns through the cards much oh, more yeah. quickly. Um, <laughs> both games have ended with that deck running out of cards. Yeah. But what's interesting is that uh, it's. I I felt in the sorry. It's also been on the cusp of ending other ways. Yeah, yeah. I felt like I was able to churn through my cards in the practice game a lot better as well it's I, I mm-hmm. yeah I, I did definitely felt that there was there's some points in the game where I'm like oh I've got terrible cards in my hand and then I thought a bit more on it and went well, actually no because I can do this and I can do that mm-hmm. like I, I packed this deck with teleport cards mm-hmm. they were all spell cards as well and there was mm-hmm. uh, where was it shadow zone so teleport mm-hmm. and shadow zone so those ones but you were just like <clears throat> go anywhere and then my movement being terrible doesn't matter 
But, and then you were very lucky, Ollie, in the fact that oh, you yeah. were able to control all those yeah. crystal sources this, by then then being able to play these this because it all requires crystal crystals. Is amazing. Yeah, but it, and it was it was our mistake not deploying anyone over there to contest those crystal sources. Mm. I mean, if I'd thought about it, I would have put uh, the tree maidens over there or something. So Ollie would have either had to spend the whole game chasing them, and then uh, I could have possibly possess- yeah, you'd have just burn it. Well, what I could have done was use the animated woods to swap out the crystal maidens for thickets, and then I could have teleported my oracle to the thickets and used overgrow to shut off your crystal source. And then half my army would be over there, and you'd have no crystals left. Yeah, that's that's nasty. My problem was that when I built this, uh, I made, after the practice game, I changed one of my units, and I basically took a bunch of cards out the deck, and what I forgot, (laughs) what I forgot to do, I I was so focused on putting woodwork woodwalk cards in which allow me to move through my thickets and make use of this mechanic mm-hmm. I'm putting down on the board I forgot to put in the cards that actually allow me to get, get the them. thickets so there's these cards with sprout on and there's also an enhancement with sprout on I don't know where it's gone uh, here it there is. is but uh, I, I only had two of these in my whole deck and I didn't that one was on the bottom but I need more than two. I need yeah. like at least four or five cards with Sprout if, on. If, if your mechanic and is based maybe a couple of these with Sprout on as well. And so I actually didn't... I only got... Ha- in the practice game, I got all 12 of my thickets out with time to spare. In this game, I got five out. So I couldn't really get those thickets going. And the thing about the Reborn is they don't have cards that allow them to take extra combat steps. And they don't have cards that allow them to just move. They've got to use these thickets and use sort of more of their sort of... Um, like their different ability, like this dodge, for example, mm. the reason it's so great is not because it la- keeps me safe from your attacks because that's non-productive, right? Yeah. Well, uh, it's, it's frustrating to play against, but it's not productive for me because I'm yeah. not getting anything out of it. You know, I just, all I do is survive, which is not how you win. I don't know. So I mean, the, if, if that's like the difference between you losing four points and not, that's pretty potent. Could just, just say, well, yeah, goodbye. sure. But you could argue that I shouldn't have put her in a position where I have to dodge anyway. She's, a, you know, she's one of the heaviest hitters. I mean, well, he had to no, be it's, she's not really, but um, she is powerful and she's highly defensive as well. So even when she does get hit. Yeah. Um, but that's the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that the a dodge allows me to draw you into the thicket, draw you into areas where I can jeopardize you. Yeah. Every time you're touching one of these green tokens and I take a passive turn, you take a wound. Mm. I didn't deal a single wound that way in this game. And in our previous game, I had. I dealt a whole mm. bunch of wounds that way, and it was Ultimate. very powerful. But, uh, you know, that game was also a lot closer. Yeah, um, it was. The practice game was was very, very close. Yeah, because although that... Well, what was quite good is... Um, I mean, Michael you... and I were drawn on victory points, and you were a turn away from winning. Yeah, but I, we, we played... I, I made them play out the turn I would have had if it hadn't ended. Yeah. It's like if, he'd used, if Michael had used one less card, and then all of a sudden I went from having no victory points to having six... Yeah. Right, did you run out of cards in the practice game? I That's ran out right, of it wasn't Ollie. Yeah. If, if he'd used one less card, which he was never going to use one less, mm. then... But mm. the thing with that is, is that that, that that was my entire gameplay, and, and I was a turn behind and just could not make yeah. it. Mm. And, it so, was, and it was because I'd managed to get four points, because one of the victory conditions is mm. to get four points uh, for victory tokens from, from each, each person. person. Mm. So because I'd managed to be successful... And getting four from Mike in the practice game, it made no sense for me then to keep attacking him with the tree yeah. maidens. Yeah, so there was the, actually who were worth nothing. Yeah. So, so you killed all my were beasts and got four points for that. Yeah. And what was really nice was actually there was this tipping point where Michael realized it was unproductive to keep murdering me, yeah. and then went after Ollie. And by ignoring me and then harassing Ollie, it gave me the opportunity to attack to, Ollie as well. Well, to sort of well, to well, well, to yeah. sort of reposition and make a comeback from where I was. Yeah. Um, Poor Master of Elements. He died horribly. Yeah, and I got to kill the Master of Elements and get some points that way. So that was uh, that was a really nice shift, and I'm, I was a, I was a little disappointed we didn't sort of see the same kind of thing happening in this this game here. But I was I was basically immobile and kind of largely irrelevant for most of this game. All I really did was prevent you from coming and getting these mm-hmm. crystal sources. But I think this is I think it's good to point out that. Our abilities are a lot easier to play. I think. Yeah. Your, your, yeah you you your, have the most convoluted it's faction. It's very by far. difficult so to I've understand and play well. Played with all of the factions now. I haven't played as them all. I haven't played as the Dverger. You've played the Dverger. I haven't played as the demons or the chapter either. I've only so I've actually played only three of them: the Reborn, the Faceless, and the Razek. But you've seen them all in action. Yeah. But I've seen them all in action, and I would I would venture that the Reborn are by far the most difficult faction to play. Yeah. They are head and shoulders above all the others. All the cards are sort of unintuitive, and you can I haven't deck built with the others, 
but I was I was a, a little surprised by how quickly I totally um, uh, nullified my ability to strategize and maneuver by uh, lacking the cards I needed. I mean, and it does tell you, it tells you on the, the, the reborn sheet, it's like, the thickets are really important. Take cards with Sprout on them. And that it was just my fault because we, we were sort of in a rush. We we're getting behind the filming and I just built this deck really quickly because I was like, I don't want those cards. I don't want that unit anymore. I want this and some more of that. And I thought I was optimizing it and instead I actually made it a lot worse. To be fair, I mean, one of the things I learned from the practice game because on, on my ca- on my law sheet it says, this guy is really, re- uh, where is he? This guy is really, really amazing. But he's only one model, so don't put too many spells in. So originally I had um, all of the spells, and it was a lot of fun to, to use them, but I realised I'm just not not getting them, so I took a load out, and I ended up pumping up the Gorehounds, because I had no cards for them at the start other than... Yeah, um, felt they were harder to I, I had I had one of these. I had one, one of those cards, and I did not use the Grant gained one temporary crystal once this entire this game or last game I didn't use them at all yeah but you certainly because, didn't need it in this game no I, I, I didn't need it because I'd, I'd sort of gone I had this bit for him this bit for them this bit for my boss man this mm. bit for anyone and, and that helped a lot I can see now this really like sort of really cool emergent tactic where if you place your shrine as the reborn where you place yeah. your shrine correctly and you can sort of create this really like uh, threatening um wall of uh, thickets vines. and vines that allow you to move around really quickly but what you yeah. can do is you can use your tree maids who aren't even worth points and you set them to running mode and they can go quite far plus they can move quite easily along the thickets if you have the right cards and you can actually send them out across the board and then they can change paces with other models and stuff like that and you can potentially use them to change place with your oracle and then use overgrow to shut down your opponent's crystal sources forcing yeah. them to come into the crystals next to your thickets which is really cool and interesting but, I mean, it's taken me a while to get my head around those tacks. This is the third game we've played with the Reborn. This yeah. is my second game with them. And I'm only just now realizing it. And I'm not even sure if I, uh, even in my next game, if I could even execute it. Within the 15 card. Well, yeah. um, I'm just... You'd have to build for it. That's the thing. You'd if, have if, to build for it and really know what you're looking you for. Yeah. You'd have to play with the Mulligan yeah. advanced rule. Yeah, but the, the thing is, is if, it's, if, if your goal is to shut down opposing crystal sites, mm. then you know that it's going to... Most factions do not deal well with not having a lot of crystals. That's the whole point. The, well, the game is basically a territory control game yeah, where the, ter- the the objectives are the crystals. Yeah, the only thing is, is these, go- these girls are worth nothing. She's worth four. So I would argue, if you're going to pursue that, putting dodge on her is invaluable. Because mm-hmm. then you've got... I'm going to use them, teleport, swap it for a thicket, and then I'm going to use the thicket to get her down there to immobilize the crystal source. Mm-hmm. I, I, and anyone they, is going to try and kill her. Yeah, so if you can, if, if you can then yeah. just say, "No, I'm not fighting this combat. No, I'm not fighting this combat. No, I'm not fighting this combat." Yeah, exactly. That's that's a make, as a combo that would be incredibly frustrating to try to come up against. Mm-hmm. But it would be it'd be very effective. It'd be very effective. But I mean, I think that uh, you know this is a game where you've got to think with sort of depending on your faction, I suppose. But generally, yeah. it's it's quite a quite a deep strategy game so mm-hmm. if you're just trying to like run in and wail on somebody chance and they've got a strategy chances are you're going to lose, lose. Yeah. run in and wail on something's not really a good strategy no in, in, all, in all honesty it's i mean not it's, gonna it's not a clever happen strategy for long, no <laughs> i mean it might it might work uh well if you, if, if you have eight turns to beef the son of kyber up <laughs> yeah yeah I, that's the one thing i mean there are cards in this deck that um, can boost the charges. I didn't play with them because I didn't have the elites. Yeah. But that was one of the things I, w- I knew I would struggle with is that getting my enhancements charged, the only way I can do it is a passive turn. There's no other way to do it in mm-hmm. my in my list. So if he if he can't benefit from that, most of the things that I was getting him to do, they they're not happening. Mm. Especially considering it's like, oh, this works if you cause a wound. So if you fail the combat because you went second, because he's only initiative two, yeah, so I like the mechanic of when he takes wounds, yeah. he gets more powerful. That's a really interesting Yeah, but that, that takes three turns of charging to set up. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if I had the uh, the smith, the uh, bloodsmiths, something. Oh, they were your... Yeah, they're, they're uh, like the charge the one up by three. Yeah. It was like, great, done. Well, I was worried that adding in the elite units would um, would sort of counter... 
Because we all, we well, I thought it, I, I guess I just felt like it'd be better to play yeah. this game with with the basic units. But now I think I, I would be more than happy to allow people. Now I've got my, I feel like I've got my head around the deck building somewhat, yeah. mm. and I can see the emergent sort of strategies for most of the teams. And fireball, I, fireball, fireball. I was really actually enjoying the deck building part, um, but I, I think it's really, really actually a very important part of this game. And I think if you get that wrong, it can. Yeah. You. Well, and that's one of my big. Uh, criticisms of the game because I do really like it but so much of the content is requires deck building because there's only one pre-constructed deck that's only used in the two-player yeah. skirmish mode yeah right so, um, so you're it, reliant, or in the campaign so you're reliant on knowing how to play each faction to know what good is in there and you won't know until you play them so yeah, it's a bit like, like a chicken be, and egg be <laughs> one horrible but I mean I, but work. you can just sit down and create a good deck as well you know um, as you guys have done today, you both created good decks, and you didn't, you hadn't played Chapter or Demons before, so it is entirely, <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> so I think, I think you know, something like the Reborn, don't like, you know, unless you're like me and you're like, I want the hardest challenge right away because mm-hmm. I'm so smart. So and then, I am and then so smart. you know, I am so smart. Inevitably, you're you're hoisted by your own petard, or yeah, you know, you're punished for your overconfidence. But the um, but the uh. <laughs> But I did really enjoy the deck building. Like, even when I was sort of, like, tweaking it after the first game, I was like, oh, this is really fun. And I like how the cards are tied into the units. And I like how there's, like, sort of three or four cards for each unit. And you're looking for these sort of combos. And you can see these strategies coming out. I really, really like all of that. Um, But I wish there was a list of decks. Like, you know, here is the demon aggressive deck. If you really like to play the demons and you want to be really aggressive... This is the deck you use. And if you're playing a two-player game, here's this version. And if you're playing a three-player game or a four-player game, here's this version. Yeah. You know, and here's the chapter super defensive deck or the chapter crystal magic deck or whatever. You know, and it's all these sort of, it gives you a lead on all the different potential strategies. Yeah. Because yeah. then you can also read through those and look for the, at the ones you like and see the variations. Yes. But it doesn't. And maybe it's, I don't know, maybe there's more of that in the campaigns. Because in the campaigns, you know, you unlock cards and units as you yeah. go through. I think, mm-hmm. um, but you know, if 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 you just if you if you're not playing a campaign or you're like us and we're sort of playing lots of different games all the time, yeah, and you don't really have, you don't really get stuck into a campaign, yeah. then you are just learning it through these skirmish games, and that does give you the mean you run the risk of going into a skirmish game with a, just a really badly optimized deck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's fifty for a three player game, fifteen cards. It's so, like you've got eighty cards to choose from in the deck. There's you a lot. Th- to you pick. throw away so much. We're like, I really want to be able to do this, but I have sixteen cards, mm. and if I can't use this one, these ones are to have to go exactly. And, and I, I mean, I think we all had that situation when we were just we had about thirty cards in front of us. It was like, I need to. And they're all good. This. <laughs> yeah. I, I need to. I don't know what this, to get rid of it, but I need to know what to get rid of without screwing over the rest. And yeah. there is no real guidance for that. So no. being. The chance of going wrong is very high, mm-hmm. but I think it's also it's also a very like sort of quick and dirty game, and we yeah. were not playing it that way in this particular game. Like we were sort of knuckling down and very defensive, and it's a game that really promotes aggression because you can deploy yeah. anywhere on the board. You can deploy almost you know you can deploy one space away from your enemy, you know. So this is like a legal deployment deployment for two units at the start of the game. And, and, it, and it's a bit of a shame because I think we did see that a lot more in the practice version than yeah. we did. Yeah, it's it's funny. I guess maybe it's because when we're filming, we're sort of like a bit like more cautious or something. I'm not sure. But um, we did see that a lot in the practice game and we didn't really see it come out so much in this. But I, I, well, I was trying to sort of my I mean, basically, the only reason this happened for me was because I was like, I'm going to deploy in the thicket. I'm going to put the crystals there so they're tempted to come into my thicket and then I can get them in the thicket. Except I didn't have the cards in my hand to build the thicket. Because I messed up the deck building, and then you guys just weren't tempted to come into my thing. Yeah, I, I looked at that entire yeah. top hand corner. I went, "That's a lost cause." Yeah, yeah. and and sort of the, the 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 part of that strategy that I didn't really consider is that essentially just leaves you to take on Ollie by yourself, and I've taken all the crystal sources. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so you've got no crystals <laughs> yeah. and, and no way. Then to I have no Ollie. confidence oh, yeah. to fight Ollie. <laughs> and yeah. that's, that's exactly why I was like, "I'm the one I can put down is going to be near my guy because m- my movement is terrible, and I've got no, I don't have the model count." to incentivize me to put one guy there because he's just going to get nuked. That that was the thing. It's having fewer models made me more apprehensive. So mm. I played more defensively, but I had the thing of I move this guy and then I fire a spell and then I teleport him away from harm and then I do it again. Mm-hmm. Or I, I finish 
beefing up my beat stick and then I loose him on you and it's just like I think what and that would have been like six rounds of combat on that last one yeah it was quite beastie yeah I mean I think and if I think uh, and I really really like the uh, honestly Michael though uh, given the amount you've used the angel of death in both the Paractus game and this game if I was to go back to this squad for the three or four player free for all I would take her out and just put in like the pilgrims or something mm. because she, she I, didn't you haven't done anything with her I mean I don't know I just feel like maybe she's not that useful I mean, I'm almost I, I'm curious as to what she would do. So I believe I didn't use her. So in my practice game, she was uh, a very similar looking board. Um, I think I had a crystal bis here well, or something I mean, like I that. Had a, I had a big fucking ticket going on the middle of the board here. And so, Pretty sure mine was but, exactly the same. So she was, she was helpful to me. Uh, because she was helping me when I was passive, I got um, an extra crystal. Well, that's right. She was just uh, controlling her uh, crystal. Hang on a minute, sorry. Right? Yep. Um, so just like that. She was a bit more over here, but uh, what I was uh, more successful with in the practice game was my knights didn't die as early. (laughs) So, and my cards that came out, I was a a lot more able to um, wield them defensive. Like there's a shield wall, like they, they were super buff. They had loads of protection on them. Um, I could, uh, where are they all? Um, There's, there's, formation i was able to like put them all together very quickly mm. um and then because i do, i was able to get more of these uh combat cards out that where i was able to fight a lot more and so yeah. i was able to use the crystals to fight more so it the practice game enabled me to be a lot more aggressive and i felt like this game because i didn't have the crystals it was potentially in my mind i didn't feel confident so i was almost like felt like she was a bit redundant because I didn't need her because I was all all my attacking was was that in the practice game. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why she was a bit redundant in the, in the practice game, but in this game mm. I was dealing I was I was getting ready to use her. And mm. I think this was my problem that I was running out of time. I was this when I said before I was like one or two steps yeah. away from um actually the the Executing gameplay itself exactly. Um because when she moves she's very powerful. Um, and I also have this winged death. I had lots of... Um, yeah, you had charged that. I had charged this really well. I could use it at least twice, and which is this winged death, which allows so me to... So there's one use per turn. No, no, but he had enough to use but it But I twice. had enough to use it twice. But you need two turns. Yes, but he still had the charges. Yeah, but I still it's had the charges. It's just the lack charge. of passive turns needed to Well, that's charge. what I mean. So again, it's just it's all about the turns to get her into play. Correct. And I just... I was just too far Each behind. Model. And I... Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Each model. So I, I felt like I was definitely more inclined to use her in this game. I just didn't get there in time. And in all, in all fairness, I mean, I, I didn't know how good that card was, but it makes me even gladder that I kept returning to this bit because I, I, I think I sent one guy out at a time mm-hmm. for the most. Part. I was just, I was probing you guys and going, I'll do this fight and then I'll mm-hmm. exploit this mm-hmm. weakness. If that alone would have convinced me to stay in my yeah. half of the board. But I also get what you're saying, Mike. It's like if I had the pilgrims, then they could act very much like your tree maids and sort yeah. of like you board board running around. Well, the, the pilgrims present. are in the lore. They're the people that harvest the crystals, crystals for the knights, <laughs> and so they've got this ability that lets them harvest more crystals faster. And so that I feel like having them would give you this option mm. of sort of threatening crystal control because mm. there's four of them in the unit. Yeah, yeah. Um, that. You just don't get with with four models. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing. You know, we, so you've all... got this super powerful model that's just kind of sitting there, and I mean, we we've all done that though, because the the, mm. the the overwhelming urge is to take the big scary thing that can hit well or survive mm-hmm. well or have this really mm-hmm. cool ability that's just like ah, delete you, delete you. But really, if if that's not what your strategy is, there's no point having them. And then taking her mm-hmm. out and the cards that buffed her up, what else could you have done? Mm. And that's that. That's a thing to think about: is how you like to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and well, and also sort of what works from the squad. So I mean, yeah. the reason to do that would be I really like the three knights and the way they and they're work. really potent. And together, I think you would find sure. less of an issue moving them around as a unit of like three guys. And it is much more difficult because they're three squads, so you can only activate one knight at a time. Mm-hmm. But don't you have an upgrade that lets you move something though? Well, he's got formation uh, that allows them all to teleport together yeah. and then all do a combat. No, no, but so you only really need to activate one so long as you've got the formation, formation card. card. Well, but there's only like is, three of them. Yeah. What I mean is, doesn't he have? Isn't there an enchantment that they can take that's basically one charge move? So you can, yes, I can move and, yeah, and so combat, you, but it's only one squad. No, no, no. So you you move the one for free, then move them, uh, then, then teleport. Well, 
that one. Yeah, so that... Oh, that's combat, though. That's just combat, not move. Yeah. No, no, they're, they're, I'm pretty sure they have one that... you might. It might not be in your deck, but I'm pretty sure you've got one that's just flat-out move. Well, yeah, there is. There's. It's yeah. on formation, though, and why wouldn't you use formation? No, no, as, an, as an equipment. So, repeatable. Oh. Is what I mean. So, you well, maybe, and then use formation, because then you've got a double move, mm-hmm. and then you're dragging the other two with you. So you have one who is your, your mover... And your anchor, mm. yeah. I, and I'm, I, I mean, yeah, leap. Really... Do you mean? Oh well, yeah, leap was put mm. in there because it helps because you could do a leap and then over formation. your hedges, yeah. which is why yeah, I put you, it in there. You could leap over the everything, and then you could just up, up, up and away pull everyone in so, with the formation so and do like sort of a killer. Combo in the, in the practice games, I was trying to use leap to get to Ollie. So and then I used the formation cards to get the rest of my knights there, yeah. so I could build this super defensive knight hub mm. to kill Ollie and that's how I was successful. And it kind of worked. Yeah. yeah, in the practice game it was, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, I lost I lost both my gore hands to you. I lost my Master of Elements to Mike and I'm pretty sure the son of Kaiba was stuck with a dodging tree spirit yeah. that he could do bugger all against. So, um, until Michael trapped her. Yes, and then <laughs> and then murder happened. Except the one game turn, ended. <laughs> one turn after the game ended. But uh, yeah, and I mean, then history he's... write the rules. And I think one of the things I've learned here as well. So hot tip for you kids at home playing this game: murder the son of Kyber before he gets his enhancements, because it takes a both... long time to do it. Though. Yeah, they're both three charge passives, mm-hmm. so he needs to equip the enhancement and then do like three passive turns, mm-hmm. unless he's got the blood things that in can. Which, in which case, it's instant yeah. good night. So yeah. yeah, just murder him as quick as possible. Um, he's a uh, nightmare in the late game. Roll a six. Ooh, nearly. <laughs> yeah, you know a five will do. But uh, yeah, so I, th- I, I think like it's, it's again, it, it's sort of. I like the game enough that it presents this intriguing puzzle that I want to keep going, and I'm really keen to try out the co-op mode as well. Mm-hmm. I think that could be really, really interesting. I, I would like to play against the darkness. Yeah, well, maybe yeah. we can get together and do some co-op. That'd yeah. be fun. Can we t- ally demons with chapter though? I like demons with a razor. You can take your double turns. I won't get the sword. Oh, this time. you won't get as pissed off when I <laughs> no. when, I'll, I'll when, go, when it's on your team. Yeah, I'll, I'll go make a sandwich and let you carry on playing with yourself, and then I'll come. <laughs> <laughs> That's about right. And you're like Michael. It's supposed to be co-op. Yeah, Mike. I've I've done one thing, and you kind of just won the campaign by yourself. <laughs> one thing I would say as well about the way this game played out is, <laughs> um, <laughs> is that uh, you know I I was really concerned in the practice game we played. Where I was in the middle, I was like, I'm going to be beset on all sides. You were. And, and I was. Successfully. And practically everybody was murdered. I was left with uh, two units that were useless that I'm not using in this game because I found them so useless. And her. Or, who was doing um, a really good job. But uh, actually, yeah, actually by that point I'd got you enough got two points. mates left as well. And I had sort of... Huh? You had two mates left as well. On oh, did I? Yeah, yeah, you, you had two had, mates you had left two, on two mates and your worms. You lost. You had five pieces, which is why I yeah, thought you, it was pointless going after you because I'd have to kill the maids, which are pointless. From them. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. and then I went after her and then managed to whiff every single combat. I did two. This guy, did, she's super defensive. This, this guy Plus four threw a fireball at incredible. her. Incredible. Threw a fireball at her, took a wound off, wounded her in close combat, mm. and the son of Kaiba managed to screw up. Basically, I think I did about you seven attacks. Did a attacks. few girls, didn't you? I did yeah. seven attacks at her, including a backstab, and it did not do a uh-huh. thing. So, so I think, and that's why you, what you yeah, want about where the I'm going yeah. with it. Well, where I'm going with this is that I, th- I feel like, for whatever reason, we all played a lot more cautiously in this game, and it actually meant that it kind of became a bit of a foregone conclusion right from the start. Yeah. And I just, I would say, do not worry about being aggressive. Do not worry yeah. about your units being killed. The game is so short yeah. that. If unless, you've got, you can win with one model left on the board. Again. Unless you're Dverger, you because then it. your guys are too expensive to lose. Well, yeah, but the Dverger guys aren't really that much... I two, mean, Michael, two points each. Yeah, but the same with Michael's so, Yeah, I was going to say that all my knights are only two. They're all worth two. Yeah, but you, ch- you chose to bring them. I mean, all of the Dverger units are minimum two. You've got pilgrims that are worth one. Yes, true. So you, you you made that decision. Yeah, but I think, on. but I think that and that that's sort of the the cr- the core of this game, isn't it? You make these decisions. Yeah, and but. Yeah, but there's no wrong decisions. It's just about making sure you know De- what your strategy, strategy is. Angel of Death is worth three, not four. Yeah. 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 Huh. So if you have a strategy in mind, then you have to build to that strategy. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, and don't, you know, don't... I mean, it's all very well to throw in a bunch of units that you like because they're cool. Then you have to find the strategy and the cards that go yeah. with them, you know. Mm-hmm. But you need to sort of have combos and an idea what you're going to do. Correct. And some of the factions... Run really four of him. 
really uh, lend themselves to... You can't. You I know. Can't, you can't. You, you get can't. one. Denied. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want them to buy the game and be like, where are my four masters of elements? <laughs> Fire. <laughs> like, uh, Ollie lied. Water. <laughs> it would be cool to have With... one of each type, yeah. Instead, he's the cool. master of elements, but he only actually has frost and fire. So he's master of some elements. But <laughs> he doesn't say all elements. Perhaps he's a master of learning. He was learning. master of element, and then he learned ice magic and added the S. I mean, I basically just wanted to say, like, you know, I think that uh, it's, it's a game that just awards aggression constantly. And if you're not playing... I mean, pretty much constantly. There's a few... F- I mean, I'd say the, the, the most difficult factions are probably the Reborn and the Faceless. And... They are, they require a bit more of sort of understanding of the tempo of the game, mm. and I think that um, you know where 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 we went wrong was just leaving Ollie unchecked. Oh yeah. god, yeah, you know, and not not deploying some models over there and contesting those points. Yeah, that, that was a gift, you know, definite gift. I'd like to think I'd have put up a fight, but oh, you well, I'm sure you would yeah. have, but uh, I think the thing is, if you're there fighting off even one or two units that we've put down mm. uh, over these two crystal it sources. It stops you running away. Yeah. What, it, what, what it means is that by the time you're done dealing with these, because you can only activate one unit per turn, plus whatever cards and stuff you've got going on, mm. but Michael and I will have all these other units over here um, taking advantage of one these unit situations. <laughs> My entire banner. Mm-hmm. But even so, like, we're going to get... Cause we're and we're that's why the initiative thing is so important, right? Like yeah. if I put my war beast over there with initiative three, mm-hmm. yeah. then even if Ollie wants to attack me, I might attack him first. And then I'm actually getting more actions out of Ali, Ollie spending his actions trying to get points out of me. Yeah. And so it's there's a really subtle sort of nuance of action and actions and the way it plays out that you kinda of have to get. Yeah. Um and you it's it's I think that's probably why it's best to start with something like Chapter versus Demons and play a bunch of games. It's, um, it's important never to underestimate initiative because I, yeah, I, yeah. the fact that these guys had initiative four, just I loved it yeah. because well, I, mean, I, know, I know I sacrificed not it. Not just the initiative but... four; it's the attack. It's the yeah. aggressive attack. Yeah. No, because what that yeah. what the initiative four does is let you go first. That's all well and good. What the attack three does is it shuts down your opponent's counter attack, and yeah. that's why it's so good. Yeah, but but that's there's there's a about I think there's about three sets of units I've seen that have that kind of combination, and. I mean, your wear beast is all, is similar. What's it when um, it's angry? No, well, that is angry. Mode. Oh yeah, so that's angry. Three mode. and two. Yeah, up from one, and that that's the kind of thing is that's you want that activation quick, mm. because once you get it, it's just better. And I had the choice of really really good movement, and honestly, middling initiative mm-hmm. versus great initiative, and I'm not going anywhere. Mm. But, but I mean, the teleporting uh, got me around that. Yeah, I mean, you can teleport them around, which is super strong. And there might yeah. be an occasion where you want to just go into astral mode and jump across to contest a crystal somewhere. Yeah. In all honesty, if that had been a crystal, that would have been a good reason to contest it. Yeah. I had the benefit that he hadn't activated, so his guys were still initiative one. Because normally mm, initiative two right is... Right at the start, yeah, yes. N- initiative two is kind of... I don't want to do say... any damage... Oh, we killed a Gorehound. Yeah, you killed... You killed uh, oh, yeah, I got... I got... I got one. You killed, you I killed tried Barky. my best to kill it, but I just couldn't get through you it. You killed Barky. You took a wound off the son of Kyber, and, I did, two, and I did two wounds yeah. to him just as I didn't have crystals to hand. Shameful, Michael. We have to do better. We will try to help. I demand a rematch. <laughs> You're both going to lose a pinky for this. Not playing the reborn again. No. <laughs> not until I've practiced. But you did. I think in the practice, I, I think you're doing yourself a little bit of disservice here. Yeah. You played the, re, uh, the reborn incredibly well in the practice game. I thought I did pretty well. And what's funny is that I actually thought that I was going to do better in this game because I was like, well, I've refined the tactics and all of that, and I actually did a lot worse. And that's interesting because I can see now my mistake was uh, was not playing as aggressively. Mm-hmm. You know, and also I I also shafted myself at the deck building stage. Yeah, I mean you, you thought you, you <laughs> thought you put cards in there that you hadn't. Yeah. Well it no, it's it's well it's it's what I did was I just didn't track it when I was p- putting it yeah. together. I was like I mean, I was, Oh yeah, and then I need to get rid of some of those, get some of these. Yeah, I, I was being anal retentive. I was like I had all yeah. of my cards like right this set, this but I set, changed this set, my this set. deck the most out of the three of us coming oh, yeah. to this. Yeah, like, yeah. Significantly. But that's and actually, even though I said the worms were useless, um I think that you it's not optimal to activate the same unit over and over again, but it's also not a terrible, like it's not terrible if you've got a unit that you never activate, mm. you know, because they might be playing a role. They might be sort of threatening an area. Yeah. You well, know, we, we said the, the worms, they have the, those burrow mm. cards. If you yeah. put that there mm. and he's burrowed, mm. he's got plus six defense 
And I'm just not I'm not going to yeah. do anything. And I was saying to you, my mistake. So the worms have this cool ability where they basically go underground and they can't attack unless you have specific cards from your hand that allow them to do like a borrow attack. Yeah. But what they can do is uh, they have plus six defense, which is practically yeah. impenetrable. Yeah. And so what they could have done, because this thing, what it does is uh, it's a crystal source. Yeah. But any enemy models, i.e. not demons, touching it who take a wound for whatever reason, take, take two. two. And so the worms could have come up here and borrowed down next to it becoming invi basically invincible and sort of bypass that drawback yeah. and then at least contest it yeah. Yeah. that and well, yes. uh, my big mistake was putting them here in the middle instead of putting them right next to it right at the start yeah. and then I could just jump them in there and borrow them straight away mm -hmm. and that's what I mean by saying the game will reward you for being aggressive because it is you are very limited in the amount of moving and combat you can do so mm -hmm. you have to be very choosy about the morals and deployment is almost a whole mini game in itself. Yeah. Correct. Where it's that's where you're sort of defining how the game and I, you know I threw like the blight beast down here and I didn't even really know where it was going. I was thinking about coming over here and contesting Ollie, but then he was had all this his shit locked up here and I was like I'm just going to throw that model away. But you know maybe it would have bought us some more time or something. So mm. you I know mean, I kind of figured you were going because at that point your blight beast would have hit, your were beast by like beast. Blight, Thingy. Blight, Blight, Beast. Blight, Blight Beast. Beast, yeah. The only thing of mine that would have hit first would have been an unchanged Gorehound. Everything else is hitting second. The buff Buffalo. Yeah. yeah, and what I've got to remember as well is that even if she's here, surrounded by all these people... I can't hit her. You know, uh, well, it's not even that you can't hit her. It's that you can only activate one per turn. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so... like, And his magic is much less effective against her initiative three. So putting yeah. her there actually is not as big a, a problem that's, that's as it might right. seem. No, nope, that's ineffective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, that yeah, that, that yeah. was ineffective, and you spent the crystal to do it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so the 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 point I'm trying to make is that uh, you know it it is it is not a sort of a traditional miniatures game in the sense where, and I felt like in this game we leaned into sort of more traditional miniature kind of tactics. Yeah. It's, everything else is yeah. usually keep your guys together because you're better yeah. together. Mm -hmm. This, and as long as you don't get swamped. Yeah. And I mean, certain armies find this easier than others, but you, you're actually pretty good spreading out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't I don't think I misplayed this where I did it. I think I had a good deployment going, mm. but it would have been very easy for you guys to take advantage well, of it. You, will, you may well have um, reacted differently if Michael and I had been doing something different. Yeah. But because I think, you know, I mean, oh, well, you won. So, yeah. obviously... There was, uh, you played it well. Given in, in fighting with the Michael, it's helped me greatly. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Maybe we need <laughs> to learn when to fight Michael and when to not fight. Mm -hmm. Or else Ollie will just win every time. Mm -hmm. Now you know. And knowing is half the See, battle. I knew, I, knew, I knew the first time. I knew when to stop fighting you the first time. Yeah, well, and that's what I was saying earlier about this sort of turn happening. But uh, because you didn't get the points in this game, it just didn't really seem... Mm -hmm. And then you're sort of... I mean, the games are so short and it was, it was sort of very quickly became unrecoverable. Mm -hmm. And I think actually what you probably want, what probably would have been better would have even been to turtle up here and just do like sort of three passive turns in a row, getting them all mm -hmm. upgraded. Mm -hmm. And even if you only get like three crystals out of it, yeah. like what am I going to do? Walk three units over there, do three attacks, maybe take off an endurance or two. Yeah. But, you know, perhaps not. And, and you then I would have felt confident that you know, I'm moving. And, and if you got that. really threatened, you could have just dumped her in and pushed everything out. And then even if she takes a wound, you can regen it with the banner again. Yeah. So like... Um, but uh, I don't know, like, I mean, uh, my deployment was all over the shop, and I don't have good cards to move people around. With the Reborn, their deployment is so key, and I just really messed it up in this game. Yeah. I just, they were all over the shop, they didn't really have an agenda. I was just like, I was sort of on autopilot at the start when they, the Tree Maidens spread out to control the crystal sources. I was like, I've done that before, it's good. But actually, if I'd really thought about it, there was much more interesting things I could have done with them. Imagine if I put them over here and oh, contested these two. Oh, Ollie would have had to spend like the first half of the game just trying to kill these just things. Just trying that are to kill it. them off of my yeah. own. Yeah. And they're not even worth any points if no. he does it. I mean, that would have been so good. And I just didn't think to do it. Yeah, and they're so annoying. But yeah, so, that, that yeah. would have been my first two turns. Celevi, yes. At least your first two turns, probably more, because their defense well, is actually pretty good too. Yeah, given how I was rolling until after I got the crystals. I know it's fairly. Uh, I know it might be a bit hard to think about it now, um, if you've just only watched the the playthrough now. But um, uh, the the several games that we played, I can see how this is a very good game, mm. uh, and it's not necessarily something I would buy 
or would tend to be something I would lean towards as a game. But I can see its merits and how people can get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Yeah. Um, and that it's... Um, well, it's quite dear to purchase, so I think you have to be really sort of into this kind of thing. Yeah. And when I say that, I mean you can order it now from Awaken Room's website for 150 British pounds. 150 British pounds? That doesn't 50 in- British pounds. doesn't include shipping. I felt left out without saying that. <laughs> so it's not... It's, I mean, uh, you get a lot of bang for your buck. I was going to say, how many, the, the, the box size is great. ginormous. I, lo- I love the, I, I do love them. Yeah, the There's models so are There's so much thought and, and effort and art and just design that's gone into this. It's, it's superb. I'm so sorry. Uh, like, let's like, be friends. Yeah. You can't help okay. me. You can't help me if I'm not touching you. Uh, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not touching, touching you. I'm not touching you. you. Anyway, this has something written all over it. But you like my you like my um, my blight beast's buttocks. Mm-hmm. Not when he farts. <laughs> no, no, master of elements, don't go near the blight hole. <laughs> The blight hole. <laughs> I'll just swing my can hammer. I, can I have your other shield, guys? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It will be okay. Mm-hmm. We'll do better next time. Whoosh. No. Get away! It's like I've never listened to you again. Michael Smith, I want to attack something next time. Just once. <laughs> I was bored. <laughs> Now, and the angel of death. Chainsaw scythe or whatever. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting combat. I want to... <laughs> and fight. fight go five good luck with that mm. set, <laughs> set four damn it I even tried to I know damn it it would have been better if you got it on a natural no <laughs> yay good well if you guys want to see more content or maybe see us play a game that uh, is <laughs> different if you want to see more of the Edge Dawnfall content, let me know. I'll probably do a video on the co-op game as well. I don't actually know the rules for it yet. I haven't read them. Um, I've just opened the darkness box and looked at the minis and gone, these are nice. Did you look at it and go, I believe in a thing called love? And then I just listened. Well, listen did you to listen the to the rhythm of my heart? <laughs> so, I, uh, yeah, so I, I mean, I probably will do a Give video of that. You make it now. If you'd like to see some more battles with more of this... Maybe we can break out some of the elite units, or maybe we can, uh, you know, try out different factions in the in the the, the free for all mode. Mm, the Dug, ones look awesome. You know, let me know, and uh, I will produce more games. But if you're not interested, then that's cool. We'll just keep playing other stuff. Comment. Let us know. Yeah, let us know because we're we we like to hear from you guys, and we like the comments, and it's always nice. And uh, if you want to, I think I feel like Michael and I have covered more or less all of our tactical blunders. But if there's anything we missed, <laughs> you can always let us know about this. Quite too. probable. <laughs> At minute three fifty-five seconds, you could have done this instead. <laughs> no, I, 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 at that moment, where I was like, "I've moved him and I've attacked." Oh crap! I didn't activate him. And then Mike just went, "He used your banner, you idiot." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good, I'm not cheating. It all, goes in, it all goes in here of how to try to do things better. And I'd like to say it stays, but sometimes it needs a few, di- <laughs> needs a few iterations. Sometimes there's a few iterations. in this side, just yeah. so it stays uh, in there. Michael, you're going to soldier through so much the edge downfall with me that you're going to have to keep playing it. You're going to be like, but I didn't even really like this. I like Euros. <laughs> <laughs> I like it when we all, like, get along. I like co-op, then. <laughs> yeah, I like co-ops. Yeah, it's a shame you're going away and I have to play with Ollie. You know... It's because it's so small. It's not because it's a cat. It sound <laughs> You're like a cat. Whiskering it. <laughs> but depending on the one, it might have. It might right. have cat in it. I think this has been quite a long final thought, so we'll check out now. Thank you very much for sticking with us and watching through this video series. And we'll be back for another video series in the future. Mm-hmm. At a time and place to be decided. Well, maybe probably, it'll probably be tomorrow. Be maybe it'll be... At another time. It'll probably be here, though. Probably. But first, we've got to get back to Earth from the edge. It's pretty far. Hey. I hope you've remembered your bus pass. I, I can teleport us. <laughs> Space bus pass. <laughs> Space anyway, bus. One for you. One for you. Thanks. One for me. Oh, no. This is teleported demon. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not demons. No. Oh, hang on. Let's see if I've got anything for this. Will it work, <laughs> on, the, will it work on the tap? No. 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 What <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> See you, guys. 
Um. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Oh, uh, I know. What? Let's all use our teleport cards. Okay. Go! Woo! Done.